biographer to some very beautiful, wonderful people. I'm Tannis Corley Leonardis, my YouTube channel is Tannis Leonardi. Now, whether the books ever come out or not, and the film adaptations of my books, <laughs> biographies about my biographies, uh, well, it's a, it's a journey. And um, so, uh, so I got 24 plus myself, 25. And so I was thinking through, how do I get started on making sure I'm on the same page with my biography? And I'll link in the video description, I've done two videos where I name everybody, all 24, plus me, twice. There's like two different formats for an autobiography, like the bulk of the stuff and then the update, you know, whether or not there ends up being more offshoots or something, but the bulk. Um, and so I'm, and I'll link to the videos in the video description. I have the full list, super full list. <laughs> And I was thinking through, what can I do if I sit down with these people? How do I make sure we're on the same page in thinking through what kind of their life story is? Especially since I have a bunch of aquatic sports athletes. And maybe take, for example, one of my biographies, Sarah Stjostrom. Uh, she's Swedish. I'm Norwegian. Uh, they're, while she is an outstanding swimmer. Her story in significance in my life has largely been about her ethnicity. Okay, um, so if it's if there's an expectation or an assumption that everything is going to be about just their career, um, we perhaps need to kind of address that, right? <laughs> a, a, a biography, and with me as the biographer, it's about a holistic approach to the human, and while Somebody might spend five hours a day training. There's 24 hours in a day. So what are the other 19 hours? Like five hours of pool time kind of thing. Or an eight hour work day. That's nice. And what are the other 16 hours? Right? The bulk of who a person is is not that. Even though it might feel like it. So I've decided to do... I was thinking through a good thing for me and my biographies. So if you're my biography and you're watching this. This is something to think about. Uh, there's this document called a curriculum vitae, and it can be broken down. Sections can be included to be kind of whatever you want to be, especially with me, your biographer, Tannis Corley Leonardi. Uh, and there's uh, two approaches to it. Write down all the categories you kind of want to include um, and put just like an entry, not even necessarily a description. Um, but if you wanted a super long version, so there's the super long version, which is an entry in a really brief description, like two or three sentences. The long version, which is every category you can think of, and then an entry. So it could be work experience, it could be schooling, it could be pets, it could be awards, you know, stuff like that. Um, favorite foods. <laughs> I'm, I'm your biographer. Your biographer is about your life story. So whatever is important there, we want to make sure it gets included in the story about you. And so, and then there's the short version, which is taking that long one or just working through, I don't know what to include in the long one. So let me, can I make it about my career in like some tangentially related stuff and do that one in one to two pages, single, single space, but you can do formatting or not format it, but like, you know, double space between each section or something like that. Um, and then we sit down and talk about it. So I was like thinking, okay. If you're my biogra biography and you're like slightly intimidated by me or this approach or some combination, but you like really are excited that I'm your biographer, I was like, can I do something like this to break that ice um, and open up the dynamic of how I'm writing these biographies to everybody, right? By making a YouTube video. So I was like, okay, let's take somebody who is not my biography. So this is someone who I am not a biographer for. Do not want to be a biographer for, but someone who the press coverage about this person I've encountered a number of times in my life. So I might be able to contextualize some brief collection of information about. So the person I've decided to do this for is Sabrina Gonzalez Pesterski. And there are a bunch of different like short bios online about this person. So since I have written and published on over a thousand pages, articles, oh wait, articles over a thousand pages on English Wikipedia, including, um, you know, over 500 edits and contributions on certain biography pages. 
I have not edited nor contributed to her biography. Um, I was like, this is a good example, right? Because I have not contributed to it. Um, so there's not like contamination risk there versus like, you know, if I chose, well, one of my biographies who I've contributed hundreds of edits to on their in English Wikipedia articles, like, well, let's go with something shorter. Okay, for starters. And so it's a relatively short um, biography page currently. I'm filming this on Saturday, 20 January, 2024. So... And I'll put the start time in the video description. English Wikipedia is currently on English time for the timestamps. So the, the revision or version of the page, because you can see the view histories and revision histories of the page. So loaded at the time approximately. So I just go with that version. So the information there. All right. It can be expanded as a person. She's relatively young for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So her page might not be as long as somebody who's been around for 60 more years. Okay. <laughs> kind of thing. So let's start the exercise. And the exercise is going to be me going through the different sections and just kind of providing contextualization. So contextualization of what information is there. And so this is going to be writing exercise 20 January 2024, contextualizing a Sabrina Gonzalez Perstersky bio. And specifically, this is the bio as it exists at the time of filming. The last time I uploaded the page, you know, kind of thing. Um, and <laughs> uh, on in, in, in English Wikipedia in my take. So there's an introductory, people call it different things. I, I call it the article summary for my writing and publishing. Right? I'm, I'm not a passive observer of Wikipedia. I actually had written and contributed over 27,000 uh original content edits of my own using my full real name as my username and so so it has her full name uh sabrina gonzalez pasterski her birth date which was 1993 um she is younger than me whether i was born in august 1992 or august 1993 not August 1993, sorry. August 1992 or February 1993, but not much younger than me. Um, and so I think that's part of, right, there's a, like, typically news isn't brought up unless it's a, like, you know, Miley Cyrus and Sabrina and uh, Selena Gomez and Termalek because they're, you know, approximately my age. Kind of, there's like stuff like that where if I were five years either direction her news might not have reached me, like the news about her kind of thing. Um, it talks about her being uh proud of her parents ethnicity um or national affiliations um ages when she graduated with an undergraduate degree and a phd and then uh faculty and postdoctoral fellow so kind of standard pipeline for those positions like why is it 99% of people at those level of institutions go through the same path? Um, I have met anomalies, the creative minds that take a different path, but they are few and far between um, at, at the like highest level. They are very cool people. They're not this person. Okay. Um, uh, then media coverage and like Google and Forbes and stuff like that, which <laughs> I'm of the Gordon clan of Scotland. So you guys know how I feel about Forbes, that's our rival clan of Scotland. I'm one of our rival clans. Okay. So I'm like, I can't just, whatever. <laughs> All right. But I don't, I didn't care about that stuff anyway. But the point here is, have I encountered any of this? I subscribe to her YouTube channel and she's one of my featured channels. Like her channel is one of the featured channels. I should do a mention in the video description to the channel. Um, yes, um, cool. Those are like stuff like if one wants to be kind of a pop science scientist, those are the kind of stuff that people follow. A lot of the people I've known in life have not been pop science scientists. They've been more on the technical side. Um, and kind of like what well, they want the technical awards, not necessarily like the flashy or I've actually had what was one electrical engineer termed that kind of stuff, sexy science, right? It's about being flashy, even if it doesn't necessarily have utility in real life. Literally, that's the stuff I've heard. And we're doing okay on time. Early life. So then talks about uh, where she was born, when she was born, the names of her parents. 
and their professions. Um, and then went to a gifted center. We had one of those. Let me guess, it was public school, right? Uh, and we had in our school system, there was a, it was either an entirely gifted school or it was like half and or it was split and like the people who achieved, so people were gifted if they achieved a certain test score. And that's what it meant to be. You standardized test, if you reach this, you're gifted. And those students went to that school. I tested, I was not deemed gifted. Um, so I did not go, although I had already decided before then, I was like, I don't really want to go. And I got the test results back and they were like, well, you don't make it anyway. And I was like, good thing my decision making as an eight year old aligns with the test results. Um, so that was kind of cool, <laughs> actually. Um, but so she, she, she's smarter than me per standardized testing. Um, but the name of the school, this is a contextualization, right? Um, I know. We had one of those schools in my school district. Its name was Meridian Park Elementary. Uh, then she built a, or she took flying lessons, started building a kit aircraft, so an airplane by, by, via kit. That was like a really big fad back in those days. They'd be like cars or airplanes or whatever. And you get all the parts and then put it together yourself. Like painting by numbers, but with technology. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I that was the stuff that I kind of heard about and a lot of people talked about and they were like well it's nice if your family has that much money right okay education in academia uh she fell off the radar a bit in terms of like my own people bringing her up in social conversation it was kind of like wah, 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 with some of the I think she kind of fit the stereotype of go to MIT get a 5.0 GPA go to Harvard it, or one of those other Ivy League schools and I was at graduate school in, for geophysics in, at the University of California Berkeley and we were all out there because we we're like you know don't necessarily want to be yet in the Ivy League right so there's a <laughs> kind of opposite end of the spectrum of her so I think that's part of why she didn't get brought up and um, that's kind of it for that. And then there's a big, the biggest section on the page is media coverage. Uh, yeah, that's the only reason she entered my life. I hadn't, hadn't heard about her and was she wasn't brought up except for media coverage. Right? It wasn't like people knew her or were in her network and then brought her up. It was people brought up the press about her. So she's kind of an interesting one in that sense of like, a, a case could be made for kind of anybody who enters a life that way is... Is the person actually famous because famous because they did something or is it because of the press coverage and she's an interesting case of in my experience it's more consistent with she's famous because of the press coverage which then makes her a breakthrough in how did she get that press coverage in the first place right that, that was kind of like well if she is a breakthrough it's kind of more like press coverage um because you know how many airplane kits are sold and put together each year kind of thing um so and those were some of like the, my peers um, making those kind of comments, and I was like, I just don't know. I'm I'm more of a, I'm a I'm a I'm an Earth girl, right? Um, even though my grandfather was a fighter pilot and my dad worked for Boeing for over forty years, and we live on the property of William Boeing, you know, kind of thing. Um, so like, yeah. So that's my contextualization. Oh, there's an awards and honors section what people deem awards and honors well you guys know i have an awards and honors playlist here on my youtube channel and what constitutes like for me i was diagnosed with cancer at age 22 and i fought it off i survived i'm a cancer survivor and especially at that age um right uh for me that's an award or honor um my biggest life achievement might be myself as coach and running <laughs> in achieving a breaking the five minute barrier as a female with myself as coach no formal training um or coaching um in my race period um as a teenager right breaking that barrier um so i think she very and her her bio very much relies on an external perspective versus the internal perspective like for me being a cancer survivor is a big deal but that might not be for her if she had something similar happen in her life um so biographies if you're watching this so not as Sabrina gonzalez Tarsersky, she's not my biography um just something to think about what would you put on your one page two page 20 page five page uh what do you want to be your story so that's that writing exercise 
happy day and time of viewing whenever you're doing this and happy place of viewing whenever you're doing this.